Being a millionaire is now irrelevant. What am I speaking about? So in this video, I'm going to talk about why it's irrelevant to be a millionaire in many cases. Now, before doing that, go over to adamfire.com, especially if you're a high net wealth individual or an expat, and see how I can help you and indeed have helped people like you in the past and presently. Now, being a millionaire, what does it mean? Uh, it sounds like I'm asking a stupid question, but it's quite interesting because looking around YouTube, whenever somebody makes a, a comment at the start of their video saying, oh, as a millionaire, or on the title of their video, they start saying, as a millionaire, they get more clicks and more likes. So if I started to make videos saying, oh, how can you become rich as a multimillionaire, they would instantly get more views than if I didn't add that part to the video. However, uh, we have to ask, what do people mean when they're saying they're a millionaire? And ultimately, a lot of people are using it in misleading terms. So there are three ways I've noticed that people will say they're a millionaire, but one or two ways are largely irrelevant. Now, let me explain. One way that people say they're a millionaire is if they're earning over a million dollars a year. This isn't common because usually it does mean the assets you own. However, I have heard people refer to themselves as millionaires due to income, but obviously if you're earning a million dollars a year, which is much more than most people are, if you're spending 1.1 million a year, you're in debt. And there are people like this. Indeed, people like Mike Tyson made half a million dollars. They were bankrupt and so on and so forth. Uh, that's one way. The second way is if they are a net asset millionaire. Uh, so if you look at all their assets minus liabilities, you could be said to be a millionaire if you've got over a million dollars, euros or pounds or whatever uh, in total. However, there's an obvious problem with this. And that's so you could have a little old lady who is struggling badly in her house, who is so-called house poor, who technically is a millionaire. But what that really means is she's got a two or three million pound house in the centre of London, a very small income, and she's struggling to pay the bills. And she's thinking about downsizing right now because basically she's poor. Um, likewise, there are other people who uh, have loads of money in things like 401ks or pensions that they can't even access until they're 55. There's loads of people who uh, have a million or more, but it's mostly in their primary residence. For example, you have some people who have got an $800,000 or pound house, 100000 in cash, 100, 200, 300,000 in financial assets. They're a millionaire, but it's mainly in a primary residence. Um, and that kind of leads me on to the kind of theme of my video. And that's that what matters more is are you a liquid millionaire? Now, what does a liquid millionaire mean? It doesn't necessarily mean you've got a million dollars or pounds or whatever just sitting in cash. But what it means is how much money can you get access to quickly or relatively quickly? So if you look online and you type in high net worth individual definition, the typical definition is you have a million dollars or more of investable assets. Investable assets means cash, ETFs, investment funds, or anything where you can get your hands on it relatively quickly in an emergency. So within say a week or two or three or whatever. In comparison, some assets like, uh, you know, uh, your home uh, or private equity or some other assets, you can't easily liquidate them very um, easily. And I think this is the key thing, right? A lot of people say being a millionaire is now irrelevant because of inflation. Because obviously a million dollars isn't the same as a million dollars 30 years ago. But I think a bigger point is a lot of the people who are saying they're millionaires are using very misleading um accounting principles. For example, there are some people who will say things like, I've grown a multi-million pound business. But what does that mean? That could mean they've got 5 million of revenue in the business and 6 million of costs. So they're a loss-making business. But it's true to say they're a multi-million uh, business if you just look at revenue. But that doesn't mean that they're making any money. There's loads of technology companies that um, you know, I've got millions in revenue, but nothing in profits. It's better to have a million in profits a year and be making 1.5 million of revenue than have 10 million in revenue and be spending 20 million a year. And likewise, some people, when they say they're a millionaire, they're using logic like, oh, my business is generating, I don't know, half a million pound a year in 
revenues. And in my industry, it's normal where we will be paid four times revenue if we sell our company. So therefore, my net worth is two million because I've got two million indirectly linked to the business. But anyone, even a five year old probably could see the problem with this logic. Saying you've got two million of net worth based on some valuation metrics is not the same as having two million in cash or the S&P 500 index fund. Um, so that's the key point, really, that anyone, no matter how much money on paper they've got at the moment, are they're really only a real millionaire or real multimillionaire if their liquid net worth is at least a uh, million dollars or pounds or euros or whatever. In comparison, if most of that uh, net worth figure is based on properties or illiquid assets, and especially if it's based on very um, questionable valuation metrics linked to a private business, they're not, they're not really wealthy. Because at the end of the day, if you've got somebody who's got a net worth on paper of, say, 2 million, 3 million, even 5 or 10 million, but it's all linked to a house, um, they might even be relatively poor. Likewise, if you've got somebody who's running a loss-making enterprise who, um, you know, on paper, some people might say they're worth millions because if one day their business is sold, they might make millions. But at the end of the day, they might actually be struggling. And some people have businesses that are generating millions um, in revenue and no profits, and they never find a buyer. In fact, most businesses that are loss-making struggle to find a buyer Um you know, uh, eventually. And this isn't just the case when it comes to people at the lower end, even when it comes to uh, very rich people like billionaires, it's something that people seldom consider. I can remember when Alan Sugar, who's the um, uh, apprentice star, the equivalent of Donald Trump, uh, who did the US Apprentice, he was asked once on an interview, oh, um, you don't come very high on the rich list, do you? Because, um, you know, you've only got one or two billion US dollars. And there's some people who've got a lot of uh, money, you know, much more money than you. And he made an interesting point and he says, yes, but I could write out a check for a hundred million dollars tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot of people who have got, uh, much more according to the rich list, but they couldn't do that. And the point he's making is that ultimately a lot of these rich lists even are just basing their assumptions on something which is very flimsy, like, oh, that person's got a private business that's generating 10 billion of revenue. So therefore, we can assume this private business is worth 30 billion or whatever it is, right? So this isn't a point which is just for kind of everyday millionaires. Even when you get higher up, um, uh, you know, the the scale, um, often a lot of these rich lists are misleading because ultimately what matters in terms of uh, wealth isn't wealth for wealth's sake. It's practically speaking, what can you do with it? You've got to remember something. The person who has $5 million in something medium risk like the S&P 500 or, you know, government bonds, maybe an hour million plus an hour million in cash, that person could retire tomorrow, right? Whereas somebody who has 10 million, but it's all linked to a private business and a private property, which your family's in, that person might not be able to retire tomorrow, right? So you've also got to ask a simple question. Practically speaking, what can I do with this money? Uh, is it just um, a vanity measure, like how much is coming in from a private business or how much your home that you never plan to sell is worth? Or is it actually real wealth? So I would say when it comes to real wealth, somebody's really only a real millionaire or real multimillionaire if their liquid net worth, that includes ETFs, cash, investment funds, and so on, is worth that amount of money. Things like private uh, businesses and private properties, which is your primary residence, it's completely different to looking at investments where you can easily get access to the money. how long they want to invest. And, and uh, I did not have at all the feeling from any bank with which I had contact with that they, they were interested in these things. Mm-hmm. Whereas um, with you, it was from the very beginning obvious to me that you had experience in these matters and also were interested in what I uh, wanted to achieve. Anyways, I'm, I'm very, very pleased and positive uh, to say that I believe I've picked the right one. Um, the results um, in the last couple of years have, have, have 
overreached my expectations by far. Um, and um, I see no reason um, why it should not continue. Of course, I can highly recommend uh, him as your financial advisor for now and for the future. Because hesitating is uh, missing out. So uh, I'm investing a lot in, in, in the Middle East market, but the uh, amount of returns I'm getting from there is very low as per the amount of return I'm getting from uh, the investment uh, portfolio which uh, you made for me. Obviously, the best result in market right now is Adam.